for everybody. If we can, let's all find our seat. And if we can, let's stand. The Bible says in Psalms, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. I believe we're all breathing in the house this morning. Can we all, uh, can we all give the Lord a hand clap of praise? I want to praise Him. Let's enter into His gates with thanksgiving and let's praise Him. God's going to do something in this service. In Jesus' name.
in this place. We've gave him praise one way. We're going to give him praise in a different way now. We're going to come together. We're going to worship and giving an offering at this time. So if you would, we have many ways to give as you're getting ready. We have GiveLify. We have regular old mail. You can send it in to P.O. Box 477 here in New Madrid. We have our website where you can pay on PayPal if you so choose to. But if you would, we're going to take a minute and we're going to pray. We're going to pray a prayer of faith. We're going to pray a prayer of giving, a prayer of receiving, a prayer that works. Well, Sister Heidi, if you would get that ready for us, we're going to pray together this morning. Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, I am a tither, and I give my offerings. And I'll bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning you can come as the Lord has laid it on your heart at this time.
something this morning that when it says wait on the Lord that doesn't necessarily mean that you sit idly by and you wait on him to pass by that means that whenever you feel the presence of the Lord that you cast your cares upon him it means that whenever you have something going wrong in your life that you let him have it you stop trying to work on it yourself you stop trying to do it your way but you let Jesus have it whenever Jesus is in this place you let him have control whenever Jesus shows up in your life you let him have what it is that you're dealing with I want to remind you this morning of a story. There's a lady with the issue of blood that found out Jesus was nearby. By law, she was not allowed to be out in public because of her condition. She was not allowed to be around anybody. But she heard that Jesus was there and she fought through a crowd. Weak. She could not, she could barely pick herself up. She was weak. She was bruised. She was battered. She was hurt. She had done all that she could do on her own. Went to every doctor. Spent all of her money. Done everything that she could on her own. And the Bible says that she got worse. But she found out Jesus was in the area. She fought through the crowd. And she had enough faith to say, If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. I'm going to tell you, the Spirit of the Lord is in this place today. And it's in this place in a mighty way. And I'm going to tell you, whatever it is you're dealing with, whatever it is you brought with you, you might have had to fight hell itself this morning to show up to church. But I want to tell you something. You were here. You were here in the house of God this morning. You are here in the place of miracles this morning. You are here in the presence of the Lord Almighty this morning. And He is ready to do a great work in this place. You no longer have to just settle and sit back for touching the hem of his garment but you can reach out you can grab his hand you can grab hold of him with everything that you have you can let yourself go and give yourself at the feet of Jesus this morning so I want to ask you this morning whatever it is that you brought with you into this house today you can leave here without it whatever you brought with you in this place if it's an ailment if it's whatever you need it doesn't matter what it is he can handle it you can leave without it you can leave it at the cross you can leave it at the feet of Jesus this morning so together as a church we're going to pray today if you have a need just raise your hand let it be made known the Lord knows what it is so God we want to come to you this morning Lord we have a lot of needs in this house Lord I have one in particular this morning that I want to pray over Mr. Sam Faulkner he has a need Lord he has a desire to seek after you Lord he knows that you are the one that can handle you are the great physician God so whatever it is that this man has wrong with his body Lord I pray that you would make a way that you would touch his body Lord that you would heal him whatever it is God you know what it is you can take care of it just one touch one heavenly touch and it can be gone Lord I pray for these things this morning Lord I pray for brother McKinney that you would give him strength Lord I pray that you would give him peace and that you would just let him have ease of his life Lord God we're praying this morning Lord for every need in this place if if we need deliverance in here Lord it's here today God if we need if we need a healing it's in this place today whatever it is that we desire Lord whatever we brought you are here today Lord to do a great work God we pray this morning Lord as we come together seeking after you Lord because we know you're the one that can handle it Lord we know you're the one that can take care of it all we pray these things today in Jesus name
surrender. That's what it all boils down to is surrender everything to him and be made new and fresh live a new life or no longer are they your hands and your feet and your eyes and your mouth but you do the work of Jesus Christ in your world that's where he's leading us thank you for coming today Romans chapter 15 if you'd stand in honor of the reading of the word of the Lord, and you're able, if you're able, Romans chapter 15, verse 14 through 21. 
we're so happy and honored to have you all with us today and and uh, at the conclusion of our sermon we're so happy to be able to baptize Ronnie and Connor in Jesus name and water amen For we, if we have been buried with him in the likeness of his burial, death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. I'm grateful for that blessed hope. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God. That I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God. That the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed. Verse 19, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about until Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation, but as it is written, verse 21, but as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. I would like to speak to you for a few moments this afternoon, or maybe minutes, probably not hours, but the jury's still out on that. <laughs> on this subject, shake yourself out of the dust shake yourself out of the dust help me preach Lord help me minister what you've given to me I pray God that our hearts and ears and minds will receive and understand comprehend and apply the word where we not just forgetful hearers but doers of the word in the remainder of this service God I pray that you will do a work Lord in the minds and hearts and lives of everyone in this room let there be a shaking Lord certainly a shaking that will bring us from our dust and it's in Jesus name we pray Amen, 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 amen. You may be seated, finally. The book of Romans, as is the New Testament from Romans on, is written to believers. In this particular case of the church at Rome, and there is at the time of this writing an approximate population in Rome Yes, at the time of this writing, about 57 or 58 A.D., approximately 4 million people in the city of Rome. A large number of these were Jewish, and likewise a large number of these were Christian believers. I like this. The traditional polytheistic religion of Rome was in a state of decay. The religious traditions of Rome were not working. And people were starting, I'm going to mess around and forget we have guests this morning, I already know it. There are people all over Rome who are tired of traditional religion and they've heard about an experience that you can have with Jesus Christ the infilling of the Holy Ghost and the people that get touched and filled by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, they're changing their world and the people of Rome have decided we want to be a part of it I wish we'd clap our hands on the Lord and tell Him I know I'm a part of something that's real something that's alive, it ain't dreamed up, cooked up, or hyped up but it's coming from the inside of me as it bubbles up and boils up and I'm a living testimony of the truth of the word of God in this world today a large number of Gentiles have left their tradition 
and begin to follow Jesus. But what has happened is the rapid influx of Gentile believers who have come from all different backgrounds that has resulted in the promotion of different ideologies and different ideals. And because, you know, every time you get a group together, everybody that comes brings a part of them with them. And the way they think and the way they've been raised in the, the culture in which they live. Now the Apostle Paul has never been to Rome. He's never visited these churches at Rome. But he comes from a place of spiritual authority and he writes this letter to address these issues. Now this letter to Romans, 16 chapters, the longest of Paul's letters, is filled with reminders that it is necessary that the doctrine remain pure. It is necessary that Christian people live a holy lifestyle. It is necessary that the doctrine remain pure. That the gospel of Jesus Christ is and all as it always is intended to be. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. Christ died, was buried, and rose again. And that also when you get the filled with the power of the resurrection, it changes you. And leads you into a holy and pure lifestyle. And then also there are strong warnings of the dangers of disregarding these reminders and these truths to the Jews and also to the Gentiles. In chapter number 15 from which we took our text, Paul once again reminds them of what they do have. He reminds them of what they do have and that nobody's questioning their ability to minister one to another. These words that Paul, I wish I could preach a little bit in here, these words are, are, are motivated not by what they're not. Paul doesn't come preaching to them because uh, and declaring uh, what they're not, but he comes preaching to them because he knows what they are. And the liar and the enemy of our soul continually tries to tear down our identity in Jesus Christ because we are his workmanship created in his image and in his likeness you buy I don't belong to the devil and I don't belong to hell I don't belong to the world and I don't belong to the powers of it but greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world oh I wish somebody would hear me right now I wish somebody would hear me I am his workmanship I am fearfully and wonderfully made in his image I am the head and not the tail from above I am the apple of his eye. We have got to declare that and know it. And Paul is telling them what they are. And they need to be reminded of who they are and how they got there. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Paul is telling them, and you'll remember this from Elements class, Sister Maria, Paul is telling them, in fact, you are so valuable. Talking to the Gentiles here. He said, you are so valuable and vital to the kingdom of God. That Brother Billy, Paul says, I was struck down on the road to Damascus. God called me to preach just so I could reach you. The Apostle Paul only has a ministry because God has faith in the Gentiles. So verse 17, he says, so I've got a reason to be excited about who Christ Jesus has reached through my ministry. He said, I'm not going to brag about anything I've done or anything I am. I'm not going to brag about who my mama was or who my daddy was or what kind of grades I made in school. I'm not going to brag about my bank account. I'm not going to brag about my car. I'm not going to brag about my truck. But if I got anything good to say, it's going to be about the power of the Holy Ghost and what God has done through me because all that stuff is going away. But I've got something in me that's going to last forever. So, he said, besides that, I hadn't done anything good anyway. Because he said, verse 19, it was by mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God. He said, from Jerusalem and round about everywhere I've been, everybody I meet, I have fully preached the gospel. You see, the Lord ain't going to change his word because it hurts your feelings. 
He's not going to change his word because he wants to get a big number. He cannot deny himself. He can't change who he is. He is I am. That I am. Which is and was and always will be the Almighty. He said, everywhere I go, regardless of their background, regardless of their beliefs, regardless of their traditions, and regardless of what they thought about Paul, he said, I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. But the beautiful thing is, Brother Hunter, is everywhere he goes and everywhere he preaches, somebody's changed. Somebody's changed. That's why he said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Everywhere to everyone. Paul preached the whole gospel. Nothing else could be expected because Paul preached what he first got. You see, Paul's a product of the new covenant. Paul is a product of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Before he got the Holy Ghost, he hated Jesus Christ. But the Holy Ghost changed his direction and gave him a new vision. Verse 19, he clearly states his desire to reach people that don't know the Lord. He said, I want to go beyond the, oh my goodness gracious, I'm having a good time and it's going to get better. Brother Richard, he says, now me and Paul, I don't want to go through a whole lot of stuff Paul went through. I'm just telling you, I ain't that tough. But I, brother Cody, it's so amazing when we begin to line up and realize where the Holy Ghost is leading us. Paul says in verse number 19, he says, you know where I want to take you? I want to take you beyond the boundaries of the religious community. He said, even furthermore, I want to get outside the walls of the church. You said, I want to take the gospel to the streets. And I want to take the gospel, uh, I want to take the gospel to the winos and the weirdos. I want to take the gospel to the honky tonks and the beer joints. And if necessary, I'm going to take the uh, you know what? We don't really believe that. Come on, I got a story. I wish I had a picture of Sister Vesta Mangan up here. You talking about a lady. She's a lady from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. And she's anointed and she's powerful. But Sister Maria, she tells a testimony of walking the street to witness to people. And the Holy Ghost said, go in that door. It was the town watering hole. Beer joint. Where ladies didn't go. The Holy Ghost said, go on in there. So you know what she did? She opened the door and went up in there. Because I want you to know, he's the God of the watering hole. I want you to know that uh, he's the God of the gutter. I want you to know you can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. The psalmist said, if I soar with the eagles and the wings of the morning, you're there. And if I make my bed in hell, you are there. He said, there ain't nowhere that I can go and get away from the presence of the Lord. And we got to be ready to take him there. You know, I'm going to ramble just a minute. You know that Goliath was always going down. He wasn't going to stand. Forty days, twice a day, he's been coming out and defying the armies of the living God. The Lord was taking Goliath down. He just needed somebody willing to carry him out there. That's all he was waiting on. I want you to know revival's for this world. And the Holy Ghost is for everybody you meet. All the Lord's looking for is somebody that'll carry him out there. Oh man, I'm meddling a little bit right now. But I last Sunday, Hunter, I'll probably testify and preach about you for a long time, buddy. But I've been telling these folks uh, for about seven or eight years. Uh, I said, there's going to be people that are going to show up here. And the very first time you see them, we're going to baptize them in Jesus' name. Uh, because uh, Brother Terrence decided, uh, I may not get a pulpit right here, but I got one in the break room at my work. Uh, and he opened up the Word uh, and he began to teach the Word of the God Lord. I want you to know that he wants to go to your job. He wants to go to your family reunion. He wants to go to your house. He wants to go everywhere. Will you take him? He says, I got to take the Lord outside the church. Oh, verse 21. He says, but as it is written. Now, Anytime you read that in the New Testament, it's a reflection of the Old Testament. 
And the Apostle Paul is bringing something back to their mind. Because he's talking to primarily a group of people who, matter of fact, one of the issues that he's having to deal with here is the circumcision issue. And people are still wanting to hold on to all of those traditions of the law that Jesus Christ came to fulfill. And so he goes back. Man, I wish... Lord, help me. He goes back to the Old Testament. Now, we're a little bit intimidated by the Old Testament because, Sister Peaches, there's some things in the Old Testament we don't quite understand. But I want you to know it's in the Old Testament where we found out who we are. The covenant people of God. It's in the Old Testament where we begin to find out, oh, come on now. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the, the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. He made the world. He was in the world, and the world knew Him not. we got to go back to the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can't wrap your mind around, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, you got nowhere else to go. We go back to the beginning. Let me tell you something. I don't care what they tell you. You got here because the Lord wanted you to be here. And you were created by the hand of God. But as it is written, Paul bringing the Old Testament into the conversation. And in this particular case, he's taking them back to Isaiah 52. Now baby, I want you to get ready to start playing. Because any time between now and after a while, I might get done. So be ready. Folks, I'm about to share with you. One of the most powerful expressions of love and truth that I have ever witnessed in my life. Sister Maria, the Lord didn't ever want the people of God to forget who they were. Never. That's why, that's why Brother Shannon, even in captivity, he would show up and bless them. He didn't ever want them to forget who he was. Because he always knew they were coming back. Because he had given them a destiny. When, oh, when he stood on that barren, desolate hilltop and he told Abraham, look as far as you can to the north, the south, the east, and the west. You see that? I gave it to you. And now tip your eyes up and look at the sky. He said, see how many stars are up there? That's how many children you're going to have. That's what your seed's going to look like. Furthermore, you see this sand that don't look like much? That's how many children you're going to have. This promised generation that I'm bringing into the world, ain't nothing going to be able to stop it. That was the promise of the Old Testament. But they got off track. Back Isaiah 52, where the prophet declared the destiny of the people of God. Back to where once again they were shown what God desired for them, but they failed. And they lost their way, but that never changed the plans of God. Will somebody hear the word of the Lord this morning? There is a faith that will outlast your failure. I said there's a faith that will outlast your failure. Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. The Lord knew Peter was about to mess up. Not only Brother Richard was he about to mess up a little bit, but he was about to blow everything he had ever been out of the water. He said, but I've prayed for you. That your faith fail not. But when you're converted, when you're turned around, when you come back through this, strengthen the brethren. Because you see, I'm going to give you a testimony. And I'm letting you know that there's a faith that outlasts your failure. Oh, let me tell you something. It's a beautiful day when you start being identified by your faith better than your failure. The plans of God haven't changed for his people. So I'm fixing to give you Isaiah 52 on red Kool-Aid. Verse number one. He says, wake up! Wake up! Thankful for the babies. If I didn't have them, I wouldn't have nobody to preach with me sometimes. 
Look what it says. The first verse. Are you ready? Awake! Awake! Put, uh, put on thy strength. Put on your strength. Wake up. You say, well, I, I thought, it, oh, it ain't for going far. I said, your strength ain't going far. You know what? He's not the God that's far off, but He's a God that's hand. And the Word of the Lord said, wake up and put on your strength. Amen. Ah, come on now, i got to preach a little bit. Uh, you know, the Apostle Paul said, I sought the Lord three times. Uh, and he said, uh, hey, I ain't going to heal you. I'm not going to make you better. You're going to have to keep this problem. But my grace is sufficient for you. Yep. Right. And Paul said, I learned yep. that when I'm weak, then am I strong. I wish somebody would realize uh, that you don't have to get physically strong. Matter of fact, you don't even have to come out of your trial. You just got to hear the word of the Lord and wake up and realize I belong to Him and put your strength on, baby, because you're coming through this and you're coming out of this and you're going to come out better. Then he says, verse number two. Shake thyself from the dust. Now that is certainly a reference to the ashes and sackcloth mentality that a people in captive are living in. They have as it were, a sign of mourning is you would take the dust and the, the ashes and you throw them up in the air and you let them come down on top of you so you could look like you felt. Huh? But I got to tell you something. There's a powerful message in this. I want you to notice this. It says, shake yourself from the dust. Arise and sit down. If you looked at that in the original, it says, arise and go to the place of honor. Shake yourself from the dust and go to the place you belong to. Oh, I wish I could share it right now. So I'm going to. You know what the Bible says in the book of Genesis, Sister Maria? It says, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. And he breathed into him the breath of life. You know what I realized, Brother Tripp? That this was a prophecy that says, shake yourself out of the dust. You know what the dust represents? It represents the earth. It represents humanity. It represents carnality. But you know what the place of honor represents? When you take your rightful place in the hierarchy of God and you're no longer influenced by the things of the world, but by the Spirit. Amen. Shake yourself out of the dust and go to your rightful place. Keep that picture. Leaving the constraints of humanity and the weaknesses of the world and be launched into the stratosphere of the spiritual. Verse 3, he said, you sold, get ready, get ready, baby. He said, you sold yourself for nothing and I'm going to redeem you with a price that money can't reach. Verse number four. I'm preaching to somebody right now. This is a word from the, for somebody. Said a long time ago, you went to Egypt and you were bound. But I set you free. But now, everybody say now, now. you're bound again. He said, a long time ago you were in Egypt bondage. And I brought you out. But you messed up and went back. Can I get a witness? Oh, I've been there. What's the deal with that? That's not how it was supposed to be. I was going to bring you out of Egypt. I was going to take you to the promised land. But you failed. But I'm back. Yeah. But the Lord said, I'm back. Look at here. He said, verse number five. He said, the enemy is rejoicing over you. And because they've seen you fall, they're declaring that I ain't much. You see, when you go under the name of Jesus Christ and you surrender to the enemy, that's the only way the enemy can get at the Lord. He can't do nothing to God. Right. 
Nothing. He has no power. In the Bible, when Jesus Christ came running up, this demon-possessed man that broke chains and couldn't nobody hold him back, he fell down on the ground and started worshiping because that's all the devil can do. But the way he gets back at God is through you and I. He says, the enemy's rejoicing over you. And they think because they got you down that I don't have the power to overcome them. That's what it says. Look at there. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. It says it. Remember when Jesus was on the cross? This ain't nothing new. The Bible said they walked by wagging their heads saying he saved thousands and can't even help himself. People are just looking for a day and an opportunity when God ain't God no more. But they're going to have to keep looking further past today. Verse number 6 he says, Therefore, it's time for me to rise up. And my people will know my name. And they will know my voice. And verse number 7 says, And it will be announced by a heavenly herald. He said, Your watchman, that's your pastor, will lift up their voices and sing. So you break forth into joy and sing, verse number 9, all ye people of God, because you have found comfort in God. I I just want to ask you, there ain't nowhere in the world feels better than this right here today. There's comfort in the presence of the Lord. Verse number 10, I love it. I can't believe I've never read it before. It said, the Lord will bear his holy arm. When a soldier would go to battle, right before he got ready to do something, he would roll up his sleeves so there wouldn't be nothing in the way of him throwing a spear, swinging the sword. The Lord said, I'm ready to go to work. See, it never was destiny for my people to be bound. He said, they're going to know my voice. The watchmen are going to sing. You break forth and sing. The Lord will bear his holy arm. Verse number 11. He said, depart ye. Depart ye. Remember, wake up. Get out. Get out of where you are. Leave where you are. Leave your captivity, but verse number 12, I love it, I love it, I love it. Verse number 12, but don't leave in a hurry. Say, oh, we got to hurry up. No, 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 no. It says don't leave in a hurry. You know what that means, Sister Maria? That means you, oh, I wish I could, man. Sister Leanne, if we didn't have so many guests, we'd be having some throw down church. We got a lot of people chicken. Y'all scared your visitors going to see you, the Lord get on you, make you go crazy. And they'll be talking about you at the coffee shop in the morning, them crazy holy rollers. Ain't that right? Uh You know what that means? It means you ain't coming out of here like no chicken. That's right. Running scared. That means, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. That means you're going to stand up. You're going to lift up your head and square back your shoulders. And you're walking out of here with confidence. Because look at here. Because the Lord is going before you. And look at here, John. And the God of Israel will be your rear guard. You know what that tells me? When I rise up, oh, Lord and have enough faith to step out of where I am that everywhere I look is no longer going to be enemy but he's on the right, he's on the left he's in front and back, underneath, over me and he's living down inside Huh? that's why we used to sing, listen he's all over me and he's keeping me alive 
It's beautiful, Sister Maria. We, you're not coming out like no chicken. But you're coming out walking with confidence. Because you're being led by the power of God and your back trail. There stands the Lord. I'm not preaching on my message. Verse 13. You're going to be honored and you're going to be blessed. But I want you to think. Stand with me real quick. Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is so beautiful. You got to see it. You got to see it. The scripture said the Lord's going to go before you and he's going to go behind you. You remember this is prophetic. And we're in the book of Romans. We're in the book of Romans and Paul is telling them, remember what was written back there? Look at here now. Verse number 14. And many were astonished at the... I read this and I thought, man, this is messed up. This don't fit my... This doesn't fit my, uh, my uh, story that I'm telling here. This doesn't fit my message. Because we're talking about walking out with confidence in the power of God before you and the power of God behind you. And then I started reading it, Sister Ashley, and let me tell you what, the Lord don't make no mistakes. And many were astonished. That's astonished. They were like, oh. Because his visage, that's his appearance, was marred. Matter of fact, his appearance was marred worse than anything we'd ever seen before. You mean you're talking about victory? You're talking about coming out? I sure am. Look at here. And his form don't even look like a man. And I thought, man, that don't make no sense. That doesn't fit. I'm talking about victory. I want you to coming out with your big gun sticking out and a soldier and everything going. Don't match. And then I realized... When I begin to walk in the power of God and he's before me and behind me, the enemy doesn't see this majestic being. You know what the enemy sees? Jesus on the cross. He sees in front of me and behind me that in the eyes of the world and the eyes of hell, John, was about to be the enemy's greatest victory when Jesus bowed his head and said it is finished he breathed his last they spun a spear into his side and blood and water gushed forth they rolled him down peeled him literally peeled him off of that tree put him in a borrowed tomb because he had nothing but very early in the morning on the first day of the week came Mary bearing spices You see, this victory that the Holy Ghost is bringing you don't look good to the world. But let me tell you something, hell is terrified. Because what verse number 14 talks about, Brother Billy, is a testimony to hell's greatest defeat. Because till Jesus Christ went to the cross, we had no hope. But every stripe he bore, Sister Leanne, is another prayer request I can pray. And every drop of his precious blood, Ronnie, was designated to wash me whiter than snow. So the picture they see of Jesus Christ is not one of strength, but of weakness. But it's in his weakness that I'm made complete. He who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God. He said, Sister Kim, Brother Larry, Sister Casey, he said, I'm going to buy you back with something that money can't buy. You sold yourself cheap. You sold yourself for nothing. But greater love hath no man than this. That a man will lay down his life for his friends. Can you see it? Scarred. Beaten. Bloody. 
It's no different than Thomas, known as the doubter. He wasn't there when Jesus came and he said, if I don't see the scars, I won't believe. If I don't touch him, I won't believe. A week later, there they are. Jesus comes into the room. You know what he tells Thomas? Touch me. So I come today to tell you, verse number 14, Isaiah prophesied. You're going to go out with confidence. Not because of anything you've done, but because of what he did. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Verse 15. So shall he sprinkle many nations. That is a reference to the blood being sprinkled because a leper has been cleansed. And leprosy is a type of the damnation of sin. And he's going to do it to many nations. People are going to come from all over. I love this part. And the kings shall shut their mouth at him. That means the leaders of all of these nations are going to stand speechless. For that which had not been told to them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall understand. Today I come to you to tell you, shake yourself out of the dust. You are made in the image and likeness of God. You weren't designed to stay on the bottom, but you're designed to go to the top. You weren't designed to be defeated, but you were designed to be victorious. But we couldn't do it by ourselves, so Jesus Christ came and bore the price for our sin so that we might be made free. If you feel like the Lord spoke to you today, we have a whole altar here to pray. You turn an al your seed into an altar. You can lift your hands right where you are and surrender to the Lord. And God will fill you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Repent of your sins. We got the baptistry already. And I think it's even pretty good and warm. But I want to let you know it's for whosoever will. Shake yourself out of the dust. There's only one way to leave the trappings of this earth. And that is in the power of the Spirit. It's a struggle for survival. We I daily meet the foe. I'm out there on the battlefield. And sometimes I stand alone. That's when I reach for my holy armor. I pick up my shield of faith. I march out to the battlefield. I take out my sword and say, The mountain's high, but it's not too steep. The battle is run, but I'm not too weak, and I won't turn back, no, no, I won't turn back. And the road is hard, but it's not too long, and the enemy is here, but he's not too strong, and I won't turn back, no, no, I won't turn back.
ladies and gentlemen, this is what Calvary was all always about. Is it's what makes this possible. Without Calvary, it's just water. Without the name of Jesus, it has no power. The Bible says in Acts the fourth chapter, verse number twelve. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. On the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up and declared and preached the very first message, he finished preaching and their hearts were touched. And they turned to Peter and the rest of the apostles and they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts chapter 2 verse 37 then verse 38 then Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost then he goes further to say for the promises unto you and unto your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call it's here that we fulfill and Ronnie and Connor and Marcus will fulfill their obedience to the Word of God. It is essential that in the waters of baptism, taking on the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are washed away. We have no gospel just with death. We have no gospel just with res burial but there had to be the resurrection come on Connor did you get a towel We're going to pray for Connor right now. I, uh, pray with us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Connor is making a public confession of his faith in the power of the name of Jesus and the waters of baptism to wash him whiter than snow. That's what your word says. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, God, that Connor not only can see himself clean and pure and holy as according to your righteousness, but he will indeed have his steps ordered by you throughout the rest of his life. I pray blessings upon him, his family, his friends, his community, in every area. I pray, God, the Holy Ghost manifests itself in his life. In Jesus' name, hold your nose with one hand. Hold the other hand right there. No, there you go. There you go. Connor sells upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles. I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Now you praise the Lord a little bit if you want to. That's right, that's right. Praise the Lord a little bit. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's the Holy Ghost, Connor. That's what you're feeling right now. That's what you're feeling right now. That's what you're feeling. It's okay, that's okay. That's what you're feeling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Everything you've ever done, your whole life is gone, Connor. It's gone in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. That's awesome. You come get it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you. That was such an honor. Such an honor. Such an honor. Such an honor.
Yeah, they won't hurt that carpet. Pray with us for Ronnie right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this man's a miracle. He is a miracle, Lord, and you brought him a mighty long way. But I'm excited to be a part of the next step in his journey. I believe, God, that there are greater things, things that Ronnie never even imagined are going to take place in his and Connor's lives. I pray, God, that the power of the Holy Ghost will manifest itself in him in a mighty way. I believe, God, that the power of your Spirit will minister through him. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ronnie's going to have a courage and a strength and a wisdom that he never knew he had. I declare that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hold your nose with one hand. Hold your other hand right there. Ronnie Sells, upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's it, Ronnie. It's powerful, bud. It's powerful. That's it. There you go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, Ronnie. Come on, Ronnie. Come on, Ronnie. That's a Holy Ghost, Ronnie. Come on, Ronnie. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's a Holy Ghost. pray for Marcus right now, God. It has indeed been a struggle for survival, but you promised we would come out. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, I declare power and authority over every power of hell and every ruler of darkness of this world. You gave us authority and dominion. We declare it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Marcus Keene, upon the confession of your faith and the teaching of the apostles, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins since you've already received the gift of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Come on.
name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Stand up. Be careful with your robe. Just lift up that name of Jesus. Can we do that? One more time, just raise your voices and magnify Him. Hallelujah! We thank you, Jesus. What a day! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. You may be seated in the house this morning. I was thinking when Brother Gio was praying over everybody and fixing to put them in that that's exactly what's supposed to happen, Sister Maria. The Bible says in the book of Acts that when they heard the message that Peter preached, they were pricked in their heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? When they heard the word, they believed the word, and they acted on what they believed. Amen? And Peter told them, you got to repent, you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus, and the promise is coming, and you shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. He said, This is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, saying, In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is it, church. This is it. This is the promise that God has given us, and I'm thankful for that in the house this morning. One more time, just give him a hand clap of praise and thank him for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. We have a few announcements this morning that I'm going to give before we're dismissed. And men's prayer meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. For all of you men that are willing and want to be here, we'll show up here tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. So we would like all of you that are able to, please come. Church cleaning schedule this week is team number four. That's my family. So Ash, help me not to forget it like we did last time. <laughs> Riverbend Kids Pizza Parties this Wednesday night. So all of you kids, be sure to invite all of your friends. I'm sure it'll be a great time, and many of you will enjoy that. I know I'm a pizza fan myself. You can tell by looking. I like food, and I really like pizza. All right, ladies' night is a pancake party, February the 16th at 6.30 p.m. So bring your own drink, ladies, and be sure to be here for that. Missouri Camp Meeting, write this in your schedule. March the 11th and 12th at the Black River Coliseum in Popper Bluff. All of you that were able to go last year, I'm sure you enjoyed it. And hopefully the good Lord willing, it's going to be just as great or greater than it was last year. Amen? Amen. Missouri Ladies Conference is April the 29th through May the 1st at Chateau on the Lake in Branson, Missouri. I know all of you ladies that are able to go to that every year really enjoy that. And it is a great time. So all of you that can, be sure to write that in your schedule. N-A-Y-C, young people, is July the 28th through the 30th in Indianapolis, Indiana. So all of you that are able to do that, I believe you've already got in touch with Sister Meredith and Brother Richard. And that is going to be a great time as well. March the 14th, we will only have one service at 2 o'clock p.m. due to daylight savings time. And one of my favorite preachers, Reverend Glenn Massey, will be preaching for us February the 28th. So all of you that can be here... I urge you to be here on that day. Write it on your schedule, February the 28th. He is a great man of God, a great preacher, and I really enjoy him. Down to earth preaching, and I'm sure you would enjoy it as well. Amen? Amen. Do we have any birthdays or any anniversaries in the house this morning? Anybody have a birthday or anniversary? Anybody? Nobody. Brother Tripp? Brother Tripp has something to say this morning before we're dismissed, and I'm going to turn it over to him. Everybody can go ahead and be stand up. 
I just feel like I got to testify real quick. Uh, can't help but feel God in this place today. God is doing something great in this church and in our lives, and I'm thankful for that. But what I want to testify is about is I told Brother Billy before church, but there's a guy that I've been praying for lately. Uh, just two or three weeks ago, doctor sent him home, told him to get his affairs in order. He's ate up with cancer. They're pretty sure he ain't got long to live, Sister Maria. But some men began to pray. Some men began to pray. And I asked last night somebody that I that talked as a mutual friend of ours. I talked to him and I said, have you heard any news on him? And they said, not lately, but the other day, I know that he went to the doctor and he had a doctor look at him, said he couldn't find nothing. And then he had another doctor look at him as a second opinion. No cancer. Nothing in his body. No cancer whatsoever. And I want to give God the praise for that. He still heals. He still does miracles. Amen. And I don't know all the details, but I know, Mamma, we've been praying for Sister Rochelle over Dyersburg. God still does miracles, people. Just to, uh, How long ago was it that they didn't even expect her to make it? A week ago, they didn't think she was going to make it through the night. Didn't have anything. But last I heard, she was up and talking to her family. She off the ventilator on her own all night long. Everything that the doctors thought would happen ain't happened. God has intervened. I had somebody ask me one time, why does God still not do miracles? How come we don't hear miracles like they did in the Bible? But I'm here to tell somebody, He still does it. Yeah. He still heals. He still changes things. He still takes what the devil meant for evil and he turns them for good. I'm going to end this service right now in prayer and thanks to God for the miracles he's done. If you will, let's pray. God, I pray right now that we will not let the hunger die within us. That we will not let the desire that's in our hearts die. When we leave this place, that we will continue to dwell upon the word. That we will continue to not only hear the word, but we will do the word. And that we'll come back over and over again. We'll go to every meeting we can. We'll talk to our friends about Jesus. We'll listen to Jesus. We'll show people about Jesus. We're going to preach the whole gospel to the whole world. And I believe that he's going to bring them in. There's a great harvest coming our way. Let's be ready for it. I pray you keep us safe until the next time we meet. I thank you for everybody that's came. And I pray you bless us in Jesus' name.